Hey guys, it's Catherine. Um, so I am starting our book review channel um, since it was so requested by all of you. So I'm going to be talking about two books that I read this past week um, and then another book that I'm going to be reading next week as well as kind of what I'm going to be reading for some of my classes that I'm excited about. Um, so hope you enjoy. So we're going to go ahead and start out with a book called The Game of Love and Death. That's the cover. It's really cute. It has a little airplane on it, so of course I love it. Um, and that is by Martha Brocken Brogue. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, but it's really cool. I picked this one up um, a few months ago. I was at the bookstore and I was just kind of checking out cute books. This one had airplane on the front, so of course I wanted to check that one out since airplanes and I love airplanes and all that good stuff. Um, so this book was really cool. I read it in about four hours straight uh, with just one class in between because um, I didn't have anything better to do with my time. Um, but this one's really cool. The general premise of it is that there are these kind of immortal beings um, and one of them is love and one of them is death and they choose players to have as part of their game um, and love is obviously trying to have them form some kind of connection um, whereas death uh, gets to kill them at the end if they aren't able to do that. Um, and they're both interfering the whole time. Um, it's kind of like a really fancy chess game, um, but the players are real people um, with their own thoughts and opinions and minds and happenings uh, going on. So it was really cool to kind of read that um, and see this like multi-dimensional game almost um, and kind of going on and how love and death kind of infiltrated themselves into the game. And then, of course, since this one's the book, um, it's gonna be a little bit of a different game than how they normally go. The guy that love chose to be his player is um, a guy named Henry. Um, he is not officially adopted, but he lives with um, the family of one of his best friends and they kind of take care of him um, and he, uh, is able to kind of put build himself up in society because of that family that's helping him out so much. Um, and then the character or the player that Death chooses is a girl named Flora. Um, she is an African American girl who loves to fly airplanes um, and she also sings in jazz clubs. Um, and the book takes place in Seattle in what time period does it happen? In the Great Depression, so probably the 30s. Um, and it's just a really cool setup, so it, not only is he dealing with them being in love and being from different social circles, but also the kind of mixed race thing that isn't quite okay yet in that time period. So, I don't know, I kind of liked it, but I also read through it very fast, so I didn't really have that much time to kind of digest and process what was happening. Um, so take that with a grain of salt. And then the beginning of each chapter has like a black page, which is kind of cool. Like that. Kind of fun. I liked this one a lot. It was really cool. Um, it was like a really nice, like romantic kind of book, um, but with a cool backstory to go with it to kind of add something new to it. So I liked that a lot. Um, so then the next book that I read is called The Hive by Jill Hornby. Um, this one's really cute and I thought it would be super fun uh, because it is about... Um, well, as the back cover says, uh, Mean Girls for Moms. So it's about, takes place in England um, at a, I guess, public school. Um, and it's just about all these different moms and how their social circle works and the queen bee and people who are kind of on the outside trying to get in or on the inside who don't really want to be there. Um, and just how all these different things that go on affect the moms um, as opposed to the dads or the kids. Um, and it kind of structures it by term. So there's like autumn term, spring term, the summer, um, and then I guess it goes into the next year a little bit. Um, and this one I, it, I read over two days, so twice as long as the last one. Um, uh, it took me a little bit longer to get into, um, just to kind of get used to the writing style, um, switching between kind of each character's viewpoint, stuff like that. Um, but I really, really enjoyed it. Um, by the end, and I thought it was a great read. Um, so it was really cool, and it was actually really cool to read this since I had written a story like that myself. 
um, like senior year of high school. So I enjoy being able to read it from an author who has a little bit more actual perspective about what fonts are like. So I like that one as well. Something else that I am going to be reading for the upcoming week is this one called What We Believe But Cannot Prove. Um, it is edited by John Brockman. So what I'm going to be reading, um, hopefully in the next few days, is called What We Believe But Cannot Prove. It's this cutie right here. It's got a nice chicken and egg on the front. Um, so basically what this is, is a bunch of different scientists um, kind of wrote really short essays on what they know is true, but have no actual evidence for. So some of them are really short, some of them are just like one page long, some of them are a few pages. Um, but it seems really cool, and I'm kind of excited to get to read that since I've been reading more fiction um, type books. So I like to switch it up a little bit and get into that nonfiction again. Um, so just to kind of see what all those people are writing, and it'll be cool since every chapter or little essay is written by a different person as well. So I'll let you know how that goes. And then some things that I'm reading for classes uh, that I'm interested in. So I'm getting to read Beowulf again, um, taking an intro to English Lit 1. So that covers from Beowulf to TJ, um, and that is in this cutie right here. Um, and I'm getting to read Beowulf again, and that's kind of cool, being able to go back and see how it's different from when I read it in 10th grade. Um, so that's fun. And then I'm also going to be reading this book called Coming of Age at the End of Nature. A Generation Faces Living on a Changed Planet. Um, so those are, again, short stories written by various people, um, just talking about their kind of experiences with things like climate change and fossil fuels um, and hurricanes and just any sort of general scientific thing in general. Um, and I said general so many times in that sentence, so I'm so sorry. Um, but... I'm super excited to read that. Um, the class itself is going to be really awesome. It's called Writing About the Environment. So these are all pieces that are kind of related to that. So that'll be interesting and super cool. So hopefully this is everything you wanted the video to be. Um, and I will talk to you guys again later. All right, bye. So just to kind of go over everything again, um, these are the two books that I read this week called The Game of Love and Death by Martha Brockenbrogue. Um, and The Hive by Jill Hornby, and I really did enjoy both of those. Um, they're definitely two very different books, but they were both super good reads. Um, and then these are the books that I am looking to read in the next week or so, um, and that is What We Believe But Cannot Prove by John Brockman, um, Beowulf, um, and that one is the particular edition in the Norton Anthology. And then I'm also going to be reading Coming of Age at the End of Nature, A Generation Faces Living on a Changed Planet, that is edited by Julie Dunlap and Susan A. Cohen, and I'll be reading that kind of over the course of the semester as we get there. Uh, yeah, so don't forget to like and subscribe, and see you next week.